Hey everybody, it's Matt with Max Video, and today we are doing an anime review. Now the anime we're reviewing today is Kokoro Connect. Now Kokoro Connect aired in summer of 2012, if I'm correct, I think I am, and it's a comedy, drama, supernatural, school, slice of life, romance, mash together. Now, I know that sounds like a lot to deal with and kind of confusing, but it makes sense when you watch it. It's done well. Um, my first um, impression of this anime was that I wasn't going to like it much. I tried it once about a year ago. I uh, got through the first episode and kind of brushed it off to the back and it came up again in my random number generator of animes to watch and I tried it again and I don't know why but the second time watching it it really clicked with me so it worked uh, anyway let's get into the what it's about um, it circles around a group of friends in the cultural club I forget the actual name of it but um yeah it's essentially none of them had a club that they fit into well so they all formed one club together and that's how they became friends now each of these characters um, are kind of different in their own aspects and I'll kind of give you a character description as I go through them. The first um, character is Tai Chi. Now Tai Chi is kind of the main, main character. There's five main characters. He's kind of the main one out of the group that you follow the most. He is that noble white knight kind of character of he only wants to help people. He's um, selfless to a fault. He always is more concerned on other people's happiness over his own. And that kind of puts him in some interesting conflicts throughout it, so, you know, like you do. I kind of related to him because I'm sort of the same way, but that's neither here nor there. So, um, next up is my favorite character of the uh, anime, Inaba. Inaba is the stoic leader type. She is the vice president of the cultural club. She, um, when you first start the anime, she seems like that, oh god, I'm going to hate this woman character. Oh, she's always serious. She doesn't have to take a joke. Um, it's, she's kind of, has that hard outer shell that is interesting. She's kind of the Sundere character. Uh, but yeah, I love her though and I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, next up is uh, Nagase and she goes by both her names Nagase and Iori. Now she is the... that's the best way to put it. She's kind of the... Sorry, if you're looking down, I'm making sure I'm pronouncing names correctly by looking at them, so... But... She's the most complex character out of the group. She is the... Let me make sure I'm talking about the right person real quick. I am. Good. She is the bubbly, excited, everything's good and great all the time character. Um... Later on, you realize that she has multiple personalities. She's very in-depth as a character. Her character development goes crazy throughout this anime. And it'll, it's only one season of 12 episodes. 12 episodes? 13 episodes, my bad. But yeah, so crazy. Like, she's a different person by the end completely. I really need to learn to stop talking with my hands because it makes my um, lighting filter go crazy, so apologize if it just dims suddenly on you. Um, but 
she is the president of the club. She is the, I guess you would say the person that the anime itself kind of teeters on. The thing that makes things happen, in a sense. Again, I'll get to that after I get done characters. Um, next up is, make sure, yeah, Yui. Is she the, yeah, she does go by, that's why. I knew her as Kiriyama. Yui Kiriyama is the athletic, um, kind of tomboyish -ish. Uh, interest. She was probably my least favorite character out of all of them. Not because she's a bad character, just because she... I don't know, she was just not an interesting character to me. She has a fear of men, because in her childhood she was, um... Somebody attempted to rape her, so it caused her a fear of men, and then Tai Chi comes and helps her out through it, gets her through it, makes her more open to the men in the club, so... Yeah, that's pretty much all I got out of her character. If you're watching this and it's your, she's her favorite character, I'm sorry. I love you anyway. Um, next up is Aoki. He is the um, comic relief, I guess you would call him. The anything for a laugh. He just lives his life to the best that he can. Doing anything he can for... You know, just living living the day to the fullest, I guess. And his character gets deep randomly. Like, it makes no sense when he gets deep. It's just all of a sudden, I'm deep. I don't know. But, yeah, he's cool. I mean, he's kind of that in-the-background character that comes to the forefront when needed. I mean, you have five main characters. It's You can't have all of them at front all the time. So, now we get to the villain, I guess you would call him, of the series, and that's Heartseed. Now, Heartseed is this, I kind of thought of him as like a prankster god kind of thing. He is this supernatural being that can possess bodies. Um, throughout the series, he usually takes the body of their homeroom teacher, and he is interested in only getting entertainment out of what he does to these poor people. And when I say poor people, you'll understand when I tell you what he does. He creates situations that um, would be awkward for anybody, honestly. At first, when the series begins, he makes it to where... They switch bodies randomly. You don't know with whom, you don't know when it's going to happen, it just happens. It first happens with Yui and Aoki, and yeah, it's crazy stuff because it's one of those, it puts you in an awkward place because you're all of a sudden not in your body, you're in a friend's body, you see things that they might not want you to see when you switch with them, so that makes it awkward. Next is they all of a sudden their deepest innermost desires come to the forefront. It's whatever you want to do but your conscience or your way of thinking whatever throws to the back and you don't do it because that's just your character. But Heartseed's little trick uh, makes it to where it happens. For instance, um, Yui sees a group of boys bullying a girl, and she kicks their butts royally, and gets taken by the cops, and Aoki, who has a crush on Yui, tries to beat the cops up. Now, this is different from their personalities because... Yui would never attack men because she's afraid of them, and Aoki is the fun-loving guy. He wouldn't try to fight cops. And so, this, again, 
gets things awkward because the things that you wouldn't say to somebody because you know it's not the right thing to say, you say anyway. And the third one that happens, this is when another, I would say another prankster god comes to fa into play, but it's actually the second part of Heartseed. He has, I guess, dual personalities is the best way to say it, and this side decides to make it a little more harder to cover up. He digresses their age to a random point in their life. Like, not just their mindset, like their bodies and everything. Like, it could go from them being, you know, high school age to five. And it only happens between, I think it was noon and five. Each day... Same time, random people. It could be one person, it could be all people. This aspect wanted it to be that Tai Chi was the only one that didn't. It didn't happen to. He was supposed to be their protector during this time. And, but he wasn't allowed to tell anybody about it, so it was awkward for him. And this got awkward because it digressed them to points in their life where traumatic things happen, life-changing things happen. It... Uh, digressed Yui to the age that when she was almost raped. Um, it digressed, um, what was it? Yori. My bad. Yori to one of her other personalities because she changes personalities due to her environment. And so it digressed it to when her mom was married to another man that was abusive, so she only wanted to please him, so she was a people pleaser at that point, which was different from how she normally is of the happily, happy, bubbly, just, you know, that kind of person. So it was interesting to see her different personalities depending on when she aged. And this kind of... Uh, peeved the original heart seat a bit because he didn't want the other half of him meddling in his entertainment so he fixed it and heart seed the reason i didn't want to call him a villain so much is he's not so much a bad guy he doesn't want to hurt them even though at certain points it makes it seem like he does but he doesn't he's literally just using them as entertainment it'd be like going to the movie and trying to burn it down he doesn't want to destroy his entertainment, so he's never going to put them in a situation that could harm them. Now, the reason it's uh, categorized as a romance anime is there is love triangles and pentagons and dodecagons and everything in here. Um, the main one is Tai Chi, Iori, and Ingaba. Inaba and Iori both are in love with Taichi. Taichi's in love with Iori, so it's this weird... Inaba doesn't care. She's like, I don't care if you love her, I love you anyway. And I'm gonna stick around until you uh, decide otherwise. That's why I love her. She's just sassy. But when I say I love her, she's actually my phone background, so... But yeah, great anime, like, I know it seems like there's a lot going on in 13 episodes, but it's so deep, it kind of makes you think about what makes a person a person, is the personality the person, or is the body the person, you know, the things you hold back from makes you who you are, and you know, you've changed so much through aging, each of the different events that Heartseed put them through makes them discover themselves more, so it's interesting to watch. I recommend this anime to anybody. Like, it has enough action to keep some people entertained unless you're just shown in all the way. It has to be constant action. You might not want this, but hey, I recommend it to you anyway. But it's good for people that like a slow anime, uh, people that like romance, a love story, but like a paranormal aspect, but like 
school and just slice of life, chill stuff. It's good for all of that, so highly recommend it. Um, yeah, that's all for me. I don't want to give anything else because there are some twists and turns to this that I don't want to give away. So I recommend it. Definitely a 4.5 out of 5, in my opinion. So, yeah, that's all for this one. Um, Lifeline launched today, technically, because it is 12.30 at night. So it is September the 1st, so Lifeline, um, the new game, launched today. So I will be starting that in a minute. And I will review that as soon as it finishes. So look forward to that and if you like this video give me a like uh, if you're new uh, please subscribe I have all kind of interesting content that I like to do so it's been great and I'll see you on the next one